So hi everyone, um, I'm Amandine and I will be your host for those uh, three days um, on our MATLAB workshop. Um, so before uh, starting, I want to just uh, yeah, again say it for everyone. So this workshop will be fully online this quarter because of the COVID-19 restriction in place at UCLA. Uh, hopefully you will still you know, get uh, as much as you're uh, hoping from that workshop. Um, I sent you an email yesterday with some, or on Saturday with some information about uh, the content of the workshop. So there was notably a syllabus with the goals and things you um, can hope to learn this week. Uh, there was also a link to a Google Drive. I will send it to you again, uh, but just so you know, on this Google Drive, I uh, will put all the slides the scripts I use during the workshop and also the recording of the workshop. So if anything is um, unclear uh, after the workshop, when you think about it, you know, tomorrow or uh, when you're working on the assignment uh, for those who are gonna take the assignment, you will have access to all the workshop material. Uh, with that said, if anything remains unclear, you can always um, contact me. So either during the workshop you ask me any questions you have or you can send me an email um, you should all have my email address but i uh, again i'll send you uh, more emails anyway uh, in the coming days so you you will have it easily um some of you i think it's not the majority of you i think it's actually only one of you <laughs> are taking the workshop for credits uh for some classes um so for those people, uh, you will have to take uh, an assignment. Um, for everyone else, the assignment is, um, you can take it if you want to you know, practice a little bit, or, but you don't have to. Uh, I encourage you to you know, try the exercises so you can check that you're actually proficient. You can ask me any questions you have left, but uh, you know, no one will recall whether you took the assignment and no one will grade you on on how well you did on the assignment. For the assignment, for the people who are uh, taking it, you, I will send you the exercise on the last day of the workshop. And then you'll have, uh, some, you'll have a few weeks to send me the scripts uh, corresponding to, to that exercise. And there's also a part that is a quiz uh, just to check the, the basic uh, MATLAB knowledge. Uh, I put, I've put all the information on the syllabus, so if you want to check the syllabus, you can find um, information you need there, but if anything is unclear, uh, you can ask me the questions tomorrow or by email again. Um, okay, so I apologize in advance if uh, sometimes I'm getting a bit lost in transitions between my screens because I only have a laptop uh, at my place. And so I have a PowerPoint and a MATLAB open and I'll try to show you um, how MATLAB works uh, with the actual MATLAB window. So I will be transitioning between PowerPoint and MATLAB. Um, and okay, one question again before starting. Um, does everyone, do every one of you have um, MATLAB working on their computer. Uh, can you give me a, a thumbs up or reply in the chat? Okay. Hi. Okay, so people who are not giving thumbs up, uh, I think I saw four people who didn't give any sign. Um, do you have, is it, okay. I only have three people left. Okay, two people left, okay. I'm gonna have to throw some names here. Carlos, do you have uh, MATLAB working on your computer? You can either use SunMap or reply in the chat. Okay, perfect. Okay, great. Um, if if you if you if you're lying because you're shy, <laughs> you can just uh, you know write to me in the chat, uh, and we can try to trouble show that together later, or you can email me. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully you are. Okay, hopefully you are all, uh, yeah, a work for everyone. So uh, saying it for potentially people who are um, listening to the, the workshop a posteriori. Now, there are two ways you can uh, have MATLAB running on your computer. You can either install the uh, desktop uh, application or you can um, 
use the browser version that works on your, uh, yeah, just your web browser. So I think it's always a bit simpler to work with a desktop version, notably when you have to import and save files. Uh, with that said, I know that you don't necessarily all have access to the same kind of uh, computer. So if you're using the browser, it's also completely fine. Uh, just if you struggle with uh, file importation and file import and file export, you can just uh, let me know during the workshop or put a, a message in the in the chat and, and we'll try to solve that together. Um, okay, so we're gonna start. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, I really encourage you to have, so I know it's not necessarily easy. If you have two screens, I recommend that you have the Zoom on one screen so you can see the PowerPoint and MATLAB on the other screen. If you don't have two screens, uh, you have to do like me and struggle between transitioning between tabs. Um, but if you can, like write actually command lines during the the workshop as i as i do them uh you like i really encourage uh that so you uh, get a bit more, bit more practice uh, i have some private question in the chat so i, I will uh, answer them for everyone in case other people have the have the same questions but didn't uh yeah didn't ask it out loud um one question I have is how do we find the downloadable version uh, of MATLAB? So what I did, and I think you should all be able to do it, except maybe the one, we have one person in the audience who is not a UCLA um, staff or student or um, faculty. For everyone else, you should be able to download it from um, the link I will send you right now. So it was so for if you if you're looking for it, I the link I'm gonna send you is uh, in the syllabus or on the workshop web page. So let me go on the workshop web page. Okay, so the person who is not affiliated with you, see were you able to access MATLAB? You can answer in the chat or you can thumb up if you or reveal your identity, or you can unmute and reply. Okay, I think it should be. Okay, so I sent a, to everyone, um, a link in the, in the, chat. Uh, if you click on it, I will explain to you how you can access MATLAB uh, with your UCLA license. So again, uh, I'm not talking about the person who is not from UCLA, but hopefully you got uh, your MATLAB license through your other uh, affiliation. Um, and yeah, you would see uh, if you scroll down. So when you arrive, I will show you the page actually so i'll start sharing my screen right now okay so the link i sent should take you here um so that's the ucla software central you click on the ucla matlab portal and you arrive on the mathwork website which is the developer of matlab um but through your ucla yes the the ucla version of the portal and um if you scroll down you'll find a sign here to get started so you you go there um i'm already signed in because i already used it a few times and then you can either download the installer or you can so I, I've done it only once, but I think you should be able to, yeah, you can use MATLAB online. So either you click on the download the installer once you've signed up or the use MATLAB online. Does that answer questions for people who are, um, stuck? Okay, I take that as a yes. 
Okay, again, if, if questions come later, don't hesitate to either throw them in the chat or email me after, after the workshop. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start sharing my screen again, and now I'm gonna take you to the actual workshop. So um, can someone give me a thumb up? Do you see my, uh, do you see my PowerPoint screen? Yeah, okay, great, thanks. Okay, so welcome. It's your short start of the workshop. Um, so here again is my email address. Uh, so we're gonna learn together um, how to use MATLAB. So I thought from when you registered that uh, we mostly have people with um, limited experience uh, coding. So hopefully that will give you the, the basis to, to get started uh, with coding. So that's a workshop about MATLAB. So we learn things as they run in MATLAB. But um, you can keep in mind that for if I don't know if some of you already know other programming languages or not, if you do, you'll find lots of things that uh, are the same. Um, if you don't, the good news is that by learning MATLAB, you also learn uh, uh, yeah, some foundation that will be useful for when you're going to also try potentially to learn other languages, like whether it's, I don't know, C++, R, Unix, whatever. Um, so a short introduction of uh, myself, so you know who, who is uh, talking to you. So my name is Amandine. Uh, it's, it, it comes from France, so you probably have uh, guessed already with my accent. I'm French. Um, so to pronounce my name, it, it starts exactly like Amanda, and it finished like Marilyn, so it's Amandine. Um, I was trained as a veterinarian, so I my original background is more in biology than in uh, computational or quantitative sciences. So um, I know it might be the case for a lot of you. I know there are people from the school of dentistry or school of psychology and so on in the in the group. So hopefully I'll be able to, you know, talk to you with words you understand and not just uh, programming jargon. Um, and I, so after my P, my doctorate of veterinary medicine, I did a PhD in ecology, and now I'm doing a, mathem a postdoc uh, using mathematical models to study infectious disease in wildlife. So I'm affiliated to the ecology and evolutionary biology department at UCLA. Um, when we are not in COVID crisis, I'm located in the Terazaki Life Science Building with the Lloyd Smith Lab. Um, and so that's where I've been mostly using my uh, programming skills. <laughs> and uh, so just so you know, I mostly work with R, um, which is the, I think the most common language that people use or environment that people use in uh, ecology and evolution. Um, so my, so I don't practice MATLAB every day. I've learned MATLAB in the past, uh, notably when I was studying uh, math as part of my studies. Um, but so if you have advanced questions, um, we will probably have to look at them together. Like I might not be able to give you the answer straight away, uh, but we'll find, we'll work together to find the answer. Okay, so why, why are you learning MATLAB today? Um, can, can you put in the chat, what, why are you learning MATLAB? Why is it because you're, you're in a lab that mostly you mat, use MATLAB? Is it because you're working on a, some kind of a, like a specific project in which you would need MATLAB? And if that's the case, what kind of project is it? Is, it, is, like, is it more a modeling project? Is it a image processing project, so on? Okay, so people are doing research, neuroimaging. Okay, so that last the last session I did, most of the participants were using MATLAB for um, image processing. Anyone else? Okay, so we we'll, we we'll consider okay electrophysiological recording. Okay, so there is lots of um, yeah data data processing um, whether they're images or other kind of uh, of data set like 
do you know what I mean? That are. Um, okay. So the good thing with uh, one good thing with MATLAB is that um, it doesn't. It's it's a programming language, but it doesn't just come on its own. So for instance, you know, when if you've taken the Unix workshop, for instance, you're in your command window and um, you know typing your line and hopefully execute them. Uh, with MATLAB, we have a full interfa graphic interface, and we also have lots of features that come with it. So. Uh, for instance, we'll see you can use a de debugging uh, feature uh, when you're in MATLAB and so on. So that's um, a good way to, I mean, to have everything in the same place. Also, when you're working with uh, generating plots, uh, you have a really functional uh, figure editor um, that can make other environment jealous. Uh, so yeah, we have all those, um, all those tools that are available. Um, it's used widely in the i think in the mass and engineering communities because uh, you can do lots of numerical manipulations quite easily it's also quite fast compared to some other languages like r for instance um yeah and there are also many built-in functions uh and you can easily interface with other languages so we won't see that in this workshop because that's the more advanced part of uh, matlab uh, but just so you know that you have access to um, a really powerful tool with, with MATLAB. Um, so some examples uh, that uh, I'm aware of, uh, mostly in the in the modeling side, actually, uh, in the mathematical modeling side. So for instance, in my lab, uh, the Lloyd Smith lab at UCLA, some people have been using um, MATLAB to run a, numerical uh, like simulation data simulations uh, using uh, numerical um, and numerical approaches so mostly um, uh, ordinary, ordinary differential equations and things like that and if some of you are taking the workshop 10 on mathematical modeling of cell signaling that's the kind of thing you would do for instance So I already asked you why you were you using MATLAB, so you can move on. Okay, so if I'm give you a, I'm gonna give you an out, outline of the workshop. <laughs> so on day one, so today, uh, we're gonna start really with the basics. Um, we're gonna go together through the interface. Um, we're gonna type uh, basic uh, command lines and see how the syntax works uh, in MATLAB. Uh, the different we're gonna see the different type types of variables and operations you can uh, use in MATLAB. We're going to write our first scripts, and we're going to start progressively to move toward uh, more complex uh, manipulations with, for instance, the if statement. Tomorrow, we're going to keep on on that uh, trajectory with the for and while loops, and we'll see more about uh, matrix manipulations. We'll then see how to write our own functions and how to import and export files. And on the last day, we will work on generating plots and we will very briefly um, have an introduction of uh, dynamical systems with ordinary differential equations. So that's just, uh, that will be very brief in the sense that that's the kind of uh, content for which you, we could spend you know, a full workshop just explaining the biological system and the assumptions we made when we use uh, ordinary differential equations to model something, uh, but we won't focus on that. It, it would just be to show you a, a quick example of the kind of simulations uh, or analysis you can do with MATLAB. Um, there is one thing I want to, to say right now is that at the end of the week, you, you, won't, you won't be an expert uh, MATLAB user. Uh, I am already not an expert my MATLAB user. Um, but you, you should have the, the foundation so you become an independent user. And you will see that it's true for MATLAB and it's true for any other programming, programming language you, you will learn um, or have already learned. Uh, you, have to, you have to always just you know, there asking Google. Uh, so while we're in the workshop, you can always ask me, but once you're gonna start uh, coding on your own, uh, if you're stuck on something, um, just Google it and 
with this workshop, you will learn the basis. So, you know, you will learn the words that we use, uh, other basic functions that exist. And so that will give you the tools that uh, will give you the independence. So you can then look for your answer on your own when you're, when you're stuck with something. When you Google a question, uh, you might very often see a website that pops at the beginning. So, you know, if you type, if you type like, uh, I don't know, matrix multiplication with MATLAB, you might have the first, so maybe not this one because it's a quite simple one, maybe on more uh, basic website, but one website that will really often pop up is Stack Overflow. So you might also have seen it if you Googled questions for R or Julia or Python or Unix or whatever. Um, just to say that's, that tends to be the kind of resource you can trust. It's kind of like a, I don't know, like a Reddit or a Quora or a Yahoo question or Yahoo answer, whatever it's called. Uh, of programming where people ask their question and then more experimented users will, will reply and the, the good replies will get a vote. So you can, the good thing with that approach is that you will find answers to any kind of questions. So for instance, uh, when I was learning how to use R, I didn't have any class and I would type from the really, the most basic questions. Uh, and now that I'm a more advanced user up to the more advanced questions, there's always uh, someone who has already asked the question uh, before you on Stack Overflow. So that's a resource you can, you can trust. I usually will pop on Google, so you don't necessarily have to look for it. Um, okay, so today we'll focus on that. And I just want to, to remind everyone that, um, you know, we have like sub goals, like, uh, you know, how to run a function, how to write an if statement and so on. But the ultimate goal is that at the end of the week, you will be a MATLAB proficient. So notably, that's what I was saying, you become independent uh, user. So you'll be able to find the answer to your questions when you need them. Okay, if you have any question, pop them in the chat. I don't see anything so far. Um, so just before jumping into actually running MATLAB, um, I want to make, uh, again, clear of the, the workshop is going to work. So it's full online. If you have any questions, you, you can just ask them. We are a small group, so I think it should be fine if you just unmute and ask. Uh, I don't expect there will be too much chaos if we do that. Uh, otherwise, you can use the raise your N uh, feature in Zoom. And as soon as I see it, I'll take your question. Or you can uh, throw the question in the chat. Uh, I have allowed, uh, enabled the screen sharing. So for instance, if you are using MATLAB on your computer and you have, a, and you have a, something that is not working, you can uh, share your screen and we can see together uh, what, what's not working. So it means that everyone will see it. Uh, if you don't want to show your screen to everyone, you can also just maybe um, take a screenshot and post it on the drive. I put the link of the drive again in the, um, in the chat. Um, if you see question in the chat and I'm a bit slow to answer because I am, I don't know, answering something else, so I'm just talking and I didn't see what the question. Um, if someone else in the group knows the answer, you are more than welcome to, to, to reply to that question. Okay, so if someone asks a question and you know the answer, you can just type the response in the chat. Um, as I said before, after the workshop, you can contact me uh, anytime uh, through my mail address. I will answer uh, whenever I can answer. Uh, that would be within a, you know, a day or two. Um, and during the workshop, you can have your camera on or off as you prefer. Uh, I don't, I don't mind. Thanks for everyone who waved when they arrived. <laughs> uh, and I uh, ask you, but I see you already are very well behaved to keep your uh, mic off until you are asking or answering a, a question, uh, just so we avoid uh, background noise. Uh, okay, so we're gonna start now. Okay, so I still have uh, a few questions. Okay, thank you, uh, Pablo. So yeah, you for for everyone who is UCLA affiliated, 
if you don't have MATLAB running yet, you can just go on the software central, your UCLA software central. You click on the access the UCLA MATLAB interface or whatever it's called, math work interface. It's quite straightforward. You click on the get started somewhere. Um, it's gonna ask you to sign in. You sign in with your UCLA um, ID. Um, and then you can either pick the get the installer and install MATLAB on your comp computer or the run MATLAB online and you'll have MATLAB in your web browser. Um, okay, if you, so uh, I know like sometimes uh, learning a language, like just the first step of getting it running the first time, it can be a, like, it's a huge, like, I mean, it's the first obstacle uh, we encounter. So I ask you, please, if you if you haven't um, installed it today, it's fine. Uh, you will still be able, you know, to see how it works, and you will have all the scripts later, so you can try them later if you want. But please try to have it running tomorrow. So if if it's not working, you can ask me the question between today and tomorrow, or you can ask ask it to me tomorrow morning. Uh, and you also like. Um, Okay, I know it's only one person, but for, for those who are gonna take the assignment, the assignment uh, in, includes an exercise where I will ask you to send me a script. So you will need to have MATLAB uh, running. Okay, so let's get started with the interface. Okay, so you should, for those who have MATLAB running, you should have something like that. Um, so that's, that's really the first window you have when you open MATLAB. I'm gonna go on mine. You might have uh, something that looks more like this. So we lost one, one window, uh, but we, we'll talk about it uh, right now. So the different parts we have on the left, we have the, uh, the current folder. So that's your working di directory. Um, okay, it's not very useful now because it's empty, but as you're gonna be working on bigger projects uh, and you're gonna have to import and export uh, files, uh, you're gonna also have to potentially call different functions that you've written before. And all your functions and files and other files will be in that visible in that um, window. So it, it can be uh, helpful when you start ending lots of files. Uh, we'll see examples later. The bottom left, you have your workspace, and that's where all the variables you're generating will um, will appear. So, for instance, I'll give you an example here. So you can see here. In, in my case, I, I already have some subfolders in my work file. In my workspace, I don't have anything yet. But for instance, and we we'll we'll see that later again. But um, if I define the variable a, which would be a number equal to two then uh, it appears here in my workspace. Uh, I'm assuming you are seeing my MATLAB screens. If it's not the case, just let me know. <laughs> um, so same, it's not very useful when we start and we only have none to a few uh, variables, but as you start working on big projects in which you have different functions that are calling variables, that will become very useful because you might have, you might have errors saying like I don't know that variable, uh, I cannot run that function because I'm missing that variable. Uh, then you can uh, look in your workspace what you have um, actually defined, and you can see, for instance, whether there was a typo or something like that. Then at the uh, bottom, or in when you have it like that, uh, the we have the command window, so that's where we're gonna write line that are going to be executed. So for instance, if you have taken any uh, Unix workshop, uh, that would be, that's just you know where you write your command line, that's the same thing. If you've taken an R workshop with RStudio, you also have that command window, or I think it's called console in R at the, at the bottom left of uh, RStudio. And it's the same thing. It's where you run your, you write and run your command lines. And the last part is the text editor. So if you don't have the text editor, the way to have it appearing is, uh, so if it's like, like that, like it is for me, you can uh, click on new script at the top left. And here you have uh, uh, your text editor, which appeared. 
So the text editor is where we're going to write scripts and we're going to um, talk about that a bit uh, later. So uh, no need to worry about it. But uh, just briefly, there are two places where you can write command lines. The first one is a command window. If you write a command line here and push enter, it's going to run the, the command line you wrote. In the script editor, you can also write command lines, but they won't be executed until you said that you until you explicitly said that you want them executed. So it's very useful when you want to write lots of like more than one command line, a, a few of them before running the, the script. Uh, it's also useful when we create functions. So we'll see that later. Um, OK, so you when you open MATLAB for the first time, you might uh, your working directory might be something like C user. I, I, okay, I'm using Windows, so uh, my apologies for all those who are using Mac, but you would have the equivalent. Um, you should have something like C here at the on your address bar. You should have something like C user, your name, and maybe MATLAB or something like that. Um, I recommend if it's a, uh, yeah, if like when you start a new project, just start with a clean folder. So we're gonna see how to create a new folder. So the first thing you, you can do is uh, if you, um, so I'm gonna go in the common window so it's look more like what you have. Okay, so I'm in the common window and if I uh, write CD, enter, I see which uh, current directory I'm on. So that's exactly the same thing you actually have at the top here or the folder that I'm here in. If it's not where you want to work, you can either change the address uh, here directly. Um, so you know, for instance, you can go on the folder you want to write and paste it here. Um, or you can also uh, change the directory. So we'll see um, first how to create a, a new directory. So to create a new directory, we use the function make dir. So that's the one. I don't know if you downloaded the slides, but oops, that's the one you, you have on, on the slide. Um, so that function make dir, and then the name of the folder you want to create, that's going to create a new folder. So if I go back here, um, is it with an I? I don't remember. Okay. Uh, I create the new folder. I run it. Um, and yeah, now you can see here I have the new folder which appear in my current folder window. So you can see that's where it becomes useful to actually have those um, current folder and workspace windows because you can check in real time that whatever you ask actually happened. Okay, so I created a new folder, but now I'm, I'm still in the same, working in the same folder as you can see here. Okay, so I've been asked if I can share the slides. Um, so wait, I'm gonna stop sharing for a second and I'm gonna put again the, the link of the Google Drive in the chat. Uh, because of the slide are there. Okay, so I put the link in the chat. Um, if you click there, uh, you are on Google Drive. And if you go in day one, you see the slides for day one. And I have another question. Okay, so uh, the other question I have is about people using the the browser. Uh, when you work, when you're using the browser version, the online version of MATLAB, it's a bit different <laughs> because you're not on your computer, so you cannot, you know, navigate the folders like you would do on your computer. Um, so it's like it, you would be in one. Um, directory that is in the MATLAB drive and you can uh, stick to that one. It's perfectly fine. Um, okay. Going back to sharing. Uh, 
uh, okay, so we are here. So I was saying now we've created a new folder, the new folder, uh, but we you can see we are still in the same folder that we were before. So at the we are in the parent folder, the new folder. So for instance, if I want to double check, I can type again CD for current directory and I'll see that I'm still in the same folder. If I want to um, change my working directory for that new folder, then I use the same uh, function CD with the name of the folder. Okay, and now you see I moved to my new folder. So you can see in the address bar here, or you can double check by writing CD. And you can see on the current folder that uh, it's empty because, um, because I don't have anything yet in that folder. Okay, so now we, we are working here. Mm, going back to the PowerPoint. Uh, if you don't remember the command line, uh, or if you just prefer to click, I have too many windows. You can also just, sorry. Uh, actually, like you, so again, I'm talking about Windows, but the equivalent for Mac. For Windows, it's going to be a, you go on the current folder, uh, right click, and you can create a new folder or new script or so on. And as I was mentioning uh, before, you can also actually move uh, using directly the address bar. Uh, so I can navigate through folders. The reason why I'm explaining you that you can use a CD uh, function in the command line and so on, it's because um, for most of the other programming languages you, you use, for which you don't have a nice graphic interface like you have with MATLAB, you will actually need to write your command line. So it's a good thing to learn uh, as a you know basic coding um, action. Um, OK, so I move on, considering there's no questions. OK, uh, so now we're going to see the basic command lines and syntax for MATLAB. So one thing you can uh, compare MATLAB to is just a, a very powerful uh, calculator. So if in high school you were using those graphic, graphical calculators, it, the same thing, but the level after. So uh, you can use uh, MATLAB to do basic calculations. So for instance, if I want one plus one, it will return uh, two. Um, a few things you can uh, notice is that um, as a calculator, actually, uh, MATLAB will save the last answer in ants. So you can see here on the workspace that now I have a new variable that was created and it's called ants. And if I want to double check that, I tap ants. That's the name of the variable that was created. And it's also two. That will be erased every time, again, like in a classical calculator. So for instance, if now I type one plus two, my ants become three. And I can check that by typing ants. Now it's three. Um, there are a few things you, you might uh, you might wonder and you can explore by um, by using the command window. So you have the basic operation, you know, addition, multiplication, subtraction, so on. Um, one question we often have when we switch from a language to another is, an, is how is a language dealing with infinity? So you can see, for instance, if you type uh, one divided by zero, sometimes some languages will report that there's a, an error and you cannot run a division by zero. Uh, MATLAB will actually consider that this is an infinite number, like an infinite value. So that's returning inf at the, at the value. Um, you can also check how it's using the, you know, the operation priorities. Uh, 
so you can use parenthesis if you want to to change you know if you're mixing addition and multiplications um, and also one thing to know is um, you see here i typed sign uh, sin pi and uh, actually matlab already knows what pi is so matlab has some predefined uh, variables like that so if i type pi i get the value of pi if i type i i get that too so you know before i created the variable a uh, and uh, a was not something that it in you for instance if i type b uh, it's telling me i don't recognize b indeed it's it's not in my workspace um and it's not a you know a common commonly used variable um be careful though because uh you can erase those variables. So, for instance, if I write uh, pi, maybe I won't use pi because I think I'll use it later. Okay, we'll define a different i. If I define i equal 8, uh, now i equal 8 and I've lost uh, my i. So, I actually don't even know how you restore it, but you can just Google it. Uh, if I know if you close and reopen your MATLAB session, it's going to Come back to i being um, that imaginary number you're looking for um, but yeah just be careful of that like don't you know maybe if you have a function that is actually using i uh, or pi or whatever uh, just before you run it check that you have actually not uh, overwritten uh, that variable uh, before uh, it can come easily especially with i because we tend to put that as an index for instance when we we use for loops or something like that Okay, so to summarize what I just said, the variable ends is a new variable that will be automatically created by MATLAB and that will store the results of your last operation. Uh, there are some variables that are defined by default. Um, and another thing that uh, you might be interested in that becomes very useful later. So you see every time I type an operation, so for instance, if I do one plus one, uh, it will give me a the ends equal to, but um, you know, if you run lots of operations, that's lots of lines to print, and you're not necessarily interested in all those lines. So, for instance, we'll see when we use loops and there are operations that are repeated over and over again, you don't want it to be printed every time. So, the way to avoid uh, having the results printing printed when you enter an operation is to add a semicolon at the end of your command line. And if I execute that, then it's not um, printing the results. However, it's still storing, storing the results. So for instance, here we look ends is two. If I type uh, one, plus, uh, one plus three this time, I put a semicolon. It's not printing anything, but you can already see in the workspace here that the value of ends have actually been updated and you can check by, exit, by running the command ends and you can see that it was indeed executed. So when you put the semicolon, MATLAB will still run whatever you ask it to run, but uh, it won't print it to you. So it's happening under the hood. So that can be very useful again when you have longer scripts and lots of operations that are uh, run uh, within your script. But it also means that you have to keep an eye. You know, sometimes you you might want to check that it's actually doing what what you want to do. Uh, that you don't have a typo somewhere and the operation are, are not off. Um, okay, another thing after the the operation. So operations are the basic stuff that you know that's like the most elemental brick of uh, of MATLAB. The there's one thing that will also be very important when you work on bigger scripts than just one plus one um, is to keep your your code clean. So there are a few things for that. Uh, we'll see uh, indentation, for instance, later. But already at this stage, um, the thing that is very important is putting comments. And to put comments with uh, MATLAB, we use the percent sign. So what it means is, for instance, if I write, um, yeah, I wrote 10 pi in, in the example. So I, I can run 10 pi, I get the answer. And 
if I put a comment, so I can just add my person sign. Uh, I put my comment. It's still running only the part that it was before the, the person sign. So you can see the text become green. Every text that is green is not going to get executed. It's just here to for you to read when you read the script, but MATLAB is ignoring it. Uh, you know, for instance, if I do this, so person and pi, like nothing happened. Uh, okay, the ends, yeah, I'll try one with it. That would change the ends value. You see here, the ends value is not changed because it MATLAB just ignore uh, whatever I wrote after the parent sign. Um, there's another thing. So it's more in when you actually have scripts, if you use two person signs, one after the other, that will define a new a new section. We we'll see we we'll see that maybe later when we we see the, the scripts. Uh, so I really encourage you to do that right now. It's you know <laughs> I'm telling you how to add, make addition and multiplication. That's not very useful. But when you have bigger scripts and you call different variables, that's going to be useful for you to put comments so you know what each variable corresponds to or uh, what exactly a command line is doing. Uh, it's good for you for, you know, if you write on, if you work on the script now, then I don't know, you start working on the manuscript for two months, you don't touch your script. Two months later, you want to look at your script again. You will really thank yourself if you, if you put comments uh, when you are, work, works on the script originally. Uh, it's also very useful if you work with other people. So maybe in your lab, you do things like working collaboratively on scripts, on, on algorithm in general. Um, maybe you have in your lab, and if you don't, you can encourage your lab to do it, have a code review um, pipeline. So you know how there is so much attention on peer review for manuscripts. Sometimes code are a bit is a bit left behind. Uh, and we, when we publish uh, studies, uh, reviewers will read the, you know, they will read the methods very attentively, but no one is actually checking the code that we wrote. So if there is a typo in the code, that can go really far before anyone notices it. Um, so yeah, that's something you can do with your lab, like review each other code, make sure there is no typo. And when you have other people reading your code, it's uh, very useful, again, to have comments because people don't necessarily think the same way you do. Um, and also with MATLAB, as with any other programming language, there are always a billion different ways to do the same thing. Um, so people have like develop different ways to code. You have your, you know, your personal style that might be very different from someone else's personal style. And so having uh, comments will really help each other uh, understand what's written in, in the code. So I really encourage you to, to do it. Okay, moving on, no questions. Um, yeah, just so you you are warned, I take a, a break uh, around the middle of the workshop. So, you know, if you need to go grab tea or go to the bathroom or whatever, that will come uh, soon. Okay, so now we talk about variables and operations. So we've already seen a little bit of it. Um, the way to define a variable in R is uh, pretty straightforward. You just put the name of the variable equal and then whatever value you want to give it. So the whatever value that can be uh, a number. So for instance, before I typed E equal to, and now E was equal to, I can overwrite it. So now I put four, um, now A equal four, I can also do it with a, a semicolon like I showed you before, so I won't print it again, but it still happens. You can see it change in the workspace here with a equal five. Uh, you can also define uh, your variable, not, you know, not simply as a number, but as the result of an operation. So for instance, that could be a equal three times 10. And that would be sorry in that case. Again, it's the same if I use uh, the semicolon. Here I put four times from time 10 semicolon, and uh, it's not printed, but A was changed, updated to 40. 
So that's how you, you define a variable. Once you have a variable defined, so I would use 10, so it's uh, yeah, more straightforward for the next example. Once you define your, your variables, you can, uh, you can use them as values in your future operation. So for instance, if I do two times, two times a, a, sorry, I have 20. So I define, before I define a as 10. So when I do two times a, it's two times 10. So I have 20. Um, so that's gonna be useful for uh, when you work with uh, algorithm. And also when uh, sometimes, you know, a won't be just one number, but actually a big matrix or something like matrix or something like that. And so it might be, you know, useful to work with just one letter that corresponds to your variable instead of uh, having to write your, your full matrix every time. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's it for defining variables. You can uh, run operations between different variables. So for instance, here I have C, uh, A equal to 10. If I define B equal uh, three, you see here I have B, which appeared in my workspace. Uh, I can do B time A and I would have 30. So that's, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, you can add comments whenever you need it. You need, like, again, uh, that'll be useful later for more complex uh, common lines. Um, when you when you start, uh, I really encourage you to always check your workspace that your workspace has been updated, so you can you know make sure like yeah check that whatever you ask for actually happened. Um, yeah, uh, I was saying you can run operation on variables as if they were numbers or if they were whatever whatever they are. And again, I I repeat. Uh, the default variables like pi, i, uh, and so on, they can be overwritten. So uh, if you're looking for a name for your variable, you might want to check before that it actually doesn't uh, exist. So if you if you write a variable that doesn't exist, so for instance, x, I showed you before, MATLAB would say, uh, I don't recognize the function or the variable x. Um, so I have a, a question in the chat asking to, to repeat what the semicolon does. So the semicolon, what the semicolon does is just hiding the result. So for instance, when I write an operation like time, time three, uh, by default, MATLAB will uh, always um, print the result and also tell you that uh, it has updated the nth uh, variable, so the answer variable. Uh, right now it's fine and it's actually useful because you can check whatever results you have, but when you're gonna run big scripts with lots of operations, then that's gonna first take longer to run because every time uh, your computer has to print something that slow it down. And also that's just gonna be a mess, a mess in, your, in your common window because you're gonna have tons of results of operations. So if you want to hide the results, you just, um, and a semicolon, and it will still run the same operation, but without printing the result. If you want to check that the operation was actually run, so you see here we have ants equal 30. If I do the same thing, but I expect the result to be 40, it didn't print anything, but uh, if I ask the value of ants again, it was indeed uh, updated. Uh, hopefully that answered your question, if not just uh, ask again in the chat. Um, okay, so I told you that. Uh, the other thing you might want to be uh, careful with is um, capital versus uh, lower letters. MATLAB is what we call case sensitive. So if you name something with a capital letter, it has to be with a capital letter. If it's with a lower letter, it has to be with a lower letter. So for instance, I define B. So MATLAB knows B but MATLAB doesn't know B. Um, the newest version of MATLAB are a bit 
uh, you know, like taking you by the hand. And they're actually, when you see you write something with, that is matching except for a, a case, um, it, it would actually suggest that thing you see here. It's saying, did you mean actually lower B? And uh, you can then execute. So um, for instance, here I just gave, uh, you know, one letter as a name to my variables. But you can call your variables with more complex name, which will actually like more complex in the sense there are several letters, but usually that also mean they're more explicit. Um, so for instance, you know, if you have uh, several variables, that would be, you know, instead of having to remember, okay, which one is A, which one is B, and so on. Again, those examples are not meaning anything right now because we're running such simple, um, you know, common lines. But when we are actually going to work with uh, with scripts or functions, uh, you'll see that giving an, an explicit name to your variable um, is quite uh, useful. Okay, so for instance, if I have those two variables, um, if I write the same thing but without the the case uh, again, MATLAB uh, takes you by the end. It's like, okay, there's a mistake here. I don't know that variable, but there is that one that kind of looks the same. So, is that the one you mean? So, just to say um, two things. So, MATLAB is case sensitive. The second thing is that actually MATLAB is really good at giving you explicit error messages. So, I know when we see a red line, we tend to just focus on the fact that, oh, there's something wrong with my code and just try to look at the code and try to fix it. But really take, take 10 seconds to actually read what it's saying because uh, it's as explicit as error message gets, I would say. So, for instance, here it says, I do not recognize that variable. So, it simply means there must be a typo in your variable or in your variable name, or you forgot to define it before. And again, that becomes useful when we have um, longer uh, scripts. Okay. Um, so, you saw when we work with those variables, they all get defined here, they get stored in our workspace. Um, and if you if you work at defining, if you if you have a project in which you are doing lots of calculation, maybe they are slow to run because there are so much of it, or maybe you just don't want to have to rerun it again, you can save your workspace. And the way to do it is simply to use a function save and then the name of the file name you want to give to your file. So I will go, for instance, uh, in my new folder. If I type save. Uh, I call it, I don't know, workspace. Execute that. And you can see now you have a new file in your folder that is has the same name uh, that you gave here. Um, you can see the format of that file is .mat for MATLAB. And um, you see, we'll see later, but there are two types of uh, files that MATLAB works primarily with. The first one is a dot mat, which is uh, the workspace. So it's a bunch of variables you've defined. Um, the second one is a dot m, which is for a script. And we'll see that very soon. Um, yeah, before uh, moving to the next session, just to say when you want, if you close MATLAB, and reopen MATLAB, your workspace will be empty. But if you saved it before, you can just uh, call it again, upload it again using the uh, load uh, function. Then you put your, the name of your uh, file and you have to put the dot mat just to say that's the one file you're uh, looking for. So by default, when you say save, MATLAB know it has to save with a dot mat. And when you say load, you have to say uh, you want to load that specific file um, with the uh, with the dot man. I think it was the same on the broader version, but if you have any issue, just you know you can try and if and if it's not working, you can just let me know when we find uh, together it works on the broader version. 
Um, again, if there is any difference there with a browser version, it's just because a browser version is not working on your computer, but it's actually working in a cloud or a drive uh, that is online. So there might be a little bit like different constraint on how to uh, handle files that are otherwise would be written on, on your computer. Okay, and so um, there's another thing I told you, you have to keep your, your code uh, clear so you can read it, uh, you know, actually yourself read it, not, not my lab read it. Uh, so you can put comments um, and things like that to, to help you. Um, there's another thing that um, I, you know, it's, it, it's helpful when you start working with big projects is to make sure you keep your workspace tidy. So um, the reason for that is, you know, if you have a script that calls lots of different variables, um, if you have a ton of variable defines, MATLAB will always run your script because it will always find a variable with the same name. Um, but sometimes, you know, it can be just a leftover from the last time you run the script and it's such a, actually the variable you want to use. I don't know if that's clear right now, but that's going to be clear when we actually use uh, scripts. But just to say, I recommend to keep your workspace tidy. So for instance, uh, if I work on the same day, I work on two different projects. Try to avoid uh, having the variable of the same project of the first project still being in your workspace when you start working on the second project, uh, just because you can use you know different values for variables that have the same name and then you can get confused. So uh, it's pretty it's pretty simple again with uh, you know the fact that you have that nice graphic interface with with MATLAB and you can see your workspace. You can actually delete, delete um, variables from here and you can see the list. But if you want to do it with the command lines, again, so with the idea that in other programs, you, you will have to use command line more than you have to, to do in, in MATLAB. So that's a good habit to develop. You can uh, see the list of variables you have with the who function. So it tells you all the variables that are defined. And you can remove some uh, variables. For instance, uh, I want to remove a. I use uh, clear a, and I removed a. So now, if I run woo again, I don't have a anymore. And if you want to clear all your variables, you can execute clear. And uh, because I saved my workspace before, I can actually get them back if I if I want. So I use a load function, load the workspace, and now you can see they're all back. And if I clear again, and I ask who is here, then I have no one. Um, okay, so yeah, I recommend doing that. Always when you start with a new project, start with a fresh workspace, fresh folder with nothing in, so you don't get mixed up between different variables coming from different projects. Uh, if you are worried about loading anything you've defined, you can just save your workspace uh, whenever you whenever you want. You can give different names if you want to save several versions and so on. Um, okay, and I think we're. I'm just checking. I don't want to talk for too long. Okay, maybe we should take a break now because then we're gonna look into a bit more um, advanced aspect. Um, okay, so is it okay for everyone if we take a break now? If you're not happy with it, just let me know in the chat. Otherwise, I consider you happy with it. Okay, um, let's do it uh, 15 minutes if that works for you. So we'll meet again at 10.55. Okay, um, see you again in 15 minutes then, 10.55. Hi again, hope you had a nice break.
Um, so I'm gonna share my screen again and we're gonna keep moving. And then any questions so far? If you have any, you can just unmute, raise your hand or put them in the chat. Okay, things I guess no. Um, okay, so moving on um, with some, uh, yes, more thing you might be interested in with, with MATLAB. Um, so you can, if, if needed, uh, you can change the format in which the numbers are displayed. Um, so again, that's if you're using MATLAB as a calculator, you know you might want more or less precision accuracy in your, in like for instance, the number of uh, decimal or, or thing like that. So, you can do that uh, using the format function. So for instance, what I had here, so we can take uh, pi as an example, because that's you know, a good example of a number with lots of decimal. So by default, we have uh, this notation. So you have uh, four numbers after the decimals. If you go for the format long, so I use the function format to change the format. I indicate that I want it to be long now. Uh, if I print by again, I have more decimals. Um, you can go back to short. Uh, you can also, I think, use uh, like, for instance, um, Okay, don't put here, but you can, yeah. Okay, you can use bank to have it display a currency. So that's with two, two numbers after decimals. Or you can use uh, rat to have the ratio instead of having the uh, number with a decimal. Um, before uh, I told you that if you, if you write an operation and execute it, you have, it would display the result with ants equal and the result. If you put the semicolon, it will um, hide the result, but it will still update it. So then another thing you can use is a function uh, disp. So for instance, um, uh, I, I would define a new variable. I would call it uh, a and I will, I don't know, give that random value, uh, 763. So uh, if I put a uh, semicolon, it's not printing anything. If I put this a, then it's printing the result of a without the ants. So it's or it's uh, slightly more compact than just when you execute a because you don't have the ants equal taking three lines showing up. Um, and also, so. If you come a lot with MATLAB, you will actually take the, like develop the habit of putting a semicolon after all your um, command lines, just because it's really annoying to always have the output showing. So when you want to have something actually displaying, so for instance, if you write a long script with, um, with lots of calculation and you want to see the final result, you can just write your script and you know, do all the calculation you have to make in your script. And then until, uh, not until the end, then you print the disp results. And so you get that result. So that's a way to have the, um, you know, to explicitly mention that here it's not that you forgot a semicolon, it's you wanted to display that result. So that, and that's, yeah, that's just a, you know, a, a useful function. Um, Okay, so it's more it's more or less equivalent to having no semicolon, but again, it's just more explicit uh, in your attention to actually display the number and also a bit more compact in the, in the format. Okay, so now we move on with um, the different types of variables you can have. So so far, I was saying yeah, we have that variable is a number, but you actually see that uh, for MATLAB there is not really such thing a number. <laughs> Everything is a matrix. Um, and the way to you know, observe that directly is to use, if you use a function size. So the function size is gonna return to you the dimension of the variable object you are interested in. 
So for instance, here I have my uh, variable a, which to me is a number, you know, is just equal to uh, 763. But if I ask for the size of a with a function size, then I see there are two dimensions. These two dimensions have only one uh, value in, so it's a one by one matrix. If you want to define a bigger matrix, uh, then we use um, the square brackets. So for instance, I put one, one, one. Actually here it's going to be, a, we'll see what it's going to be. So I run that, I have B now, and if I run size B, I have one by three. So I have a matrix of uh, one row by three columns. Is that okay? You understand what the size function is, what a matrix is? Uh, you might um, hear later about the length function, and that might get a bit confusing because you know what the difference between length and size. But so the length function will return only one number, and that's going to be the largest dimension. So for instance, if I consider my uh, vector b, so again I call that a vector because for me it's a vector because it's only you know a three number on a on the row, but for MATLAB, it's actually a matrix, a one by three matrix. But so if I uh, ask for the length of B, then I have three. That's the largest dimension of my vector. So it's not one, it's three. If I add a vector the other way around, so one colon and three rows, it will also be three. Uh, that's um, something to keep in mind because it's not the same for every programming language. So I won't tell you what it is for other languages to not confuse you, but just uh, if you're used to switch between different programming languages, you might want to check again what length does in your in that specific environment you're using. Um, so when you ask for the size, uh, usually we return two numbers as a default. You have, by default, you have two dimensions, even though with MATLAB you can have objects with more than two dimensions. But so by default, you have two dimensions, and it's always the number of rows first, and then the number of columns. So for instance, when I did my three uh, columns and one row, that was one by three. Uh, so you, you can try um, different vectors. You can try running a vector in your, like creating a vector in your, in your MATLAB, your own MATLAB window and see what size you get. Um, you can use the same thing that I said before. Um, by that, I mean, if you put the semicolon, you, it, your vector won't be displayed, but it's still going to be defined. If you don't use it, it's going to be displayed. You can also use a disk function. Um, you can define a matrix the same way we define a number. So a matrix or a vector, same way we define a number before. And by that, I mean you put name equal whatever value you want to uh, put in. Um, and I probably say, yeah. Um, there are different notations you can use. So for instance, here I did a vector that goes from one to four with an incrementation of one. So one, two, three, four. You can do the exact same thing uh, using uh, that notation. So you put between square brackets one colon four, and that would uh, by default go from one to four with a step uh, of one. You can adjust the step, uh, if I remember well, it's by using another, no, that's not this way. Okay, I'll check how we adjust the step, uh, but I Googled it, so that's something. Um, yeah, we can. you see an example of where I get stuck on simple stuff, but you can find the answer on Google. I'll let you know later when I actually Google it. Um, and yeah, one thing that is uh, 
actually why people use MATLAB for uh, notably like, uh, you know, things like ordinary differential equation and other math uh, thing like that is that MATLAB is made such that you can really easily perform operations on vector and matrices. So for instance, if I have two vectors, so I have my first vector, that would be the one I just defined. So the one, two, three, and four. And second one. I go the other way around. Three, uh, four, three, two, one. Okay, you can now run uh, operation on those two vectors. So, for instance, an addition. And you see uh, here what happened is that MATLAB did an uh, element wise addition. So, it took the first element of my first vector and added it to the first element of my second vector. And then the second element of the first vector plus the second element of the second vector and so on. Um, depending on the version of MATLAB you have in my change, I think you should all have the 2021 now because I assume you all downloaded it today. Um, the way MATLAB will deal with uh, matrix operations. So for instance, here I tried to do a matrix operation and it's not working uh, because I have two row columns, uh, two row vectors, sorry. So, you know, it cannot do the matrix operation for which you need to have the number of, um, of rows of one, of one, vec one uh, vector equal to the number of uh, columns to the other vector. It's not the case, so it's not working. You cannot multiply these two vectors together. However, you can still do a element-wise um, multiplication. So if you want to do first element time, the first element, second element time, the second element, and so on. Uh, and to do that, you use the same notation, but you add a dot before the multiplication sign, so before your operator. And here it works. And you can see it did, um, you know, four times one, three times two, two times three, and, um, and four times one. So if you add a point, if, you are, if you're doing operations between matrices or vectors and you add a, a dot in front of the operator, then it will switch from matrix-wise operations to uh, element-wise operations. Um, same, it's, uh, so that's the kind of thing that depends between the different languages you're using. So if you switch from a language to another, I recommend just checking, you know, like you do something like that, you print like very basic vectors and you check what MATLAB is actually doing, what your language is actually doing, just to make sure it's doing what you want it to do and not what you think you remember maybe it was doing. Um, okay. And so uh, the two vectors I showed you before they were on a row. So we had uh, four elements, one, two, three, four on the row. If you want to have columns instead, the way to do it is using a semicolon instead of commas to separate the elements in your in your vector. So the thing you have to remember is uh, if you put commas between two numbers, that will put them side by side. But if you put uh, semicolons between two numbers, that would put them one at the top of the other. And so you can, I'm, I'm saying that with two numbers, but they actually work with a, the whole matrix. So for instance, if I decide to define a, a matrix that goes, uh, you know, first um, column, first row is one, two, three, then second row. So I separated my three elements with commas because I was on the same row. Then I'm switching to the second row. So I'm putting a semicolon and I do 10, 20, 30. Then moving to the next row, 
I put a semicolon and I can come like that. And so when I display that, I have my three by three uh, matrix. You can check by using the a the size uh, function, and you see it's a three by three. So remember, commas on the same line, semicolon means switch to the next line. Um, you can again play with the different operations you you can do with different uh, a mat, like MATLAB uh, like the way MATLAB deals these different you know operations between vectors of matrices with different uh, dimensions. Uh, I had the issue last time when I did the the workshop in person. Uh, some people were using the MATLAB on the desktop we have in the collaboratory room. And there was an issue with um, MATLAB could, couldn't run some operations. The 2016 version that was on the desktop uh, couldn't run some operation that my 2021 version uh, could run. So, you know, I was saying it depends on different languages you're using, the way operations are dealt with, but it actually also depends on the MATLAB version. And uh, here I, I put the link like where I found the answer. Like it was just they did they indeed made an update uh, in like 2019 or something like that um, that allowed you to uh, like that changed some some of the way the operations were done. So keep an eye on that. Like check that it's actually doing what you're doing when you do operations. Uh, another useful operation that you might want to use is a transposition. So if you want to switch from a row matrix or a row, a row vector to a column vector, or just you know transpose your matrix, and you do that with that apostrophe um, sign. So for instance, if I take my um, vector B again, that was uh, a row vector. If I do B and the apostrophe, now I have a, a column vector. I can do the same with uh, A. So A was this three by three. I transpose, I still have a three by three, but the other way around. Again, if anything is unclear, just let me know. Uh, okay, so we've seen that when we uh, create matrices with uh, rows and colon. Again, it's the same thing when you look at the size function. The answer will always be number of rows and then number of columns. Uh, we've seen that. That's when we do operations. If you want to do it mat matrix matrix wise, you use the operator at it is. If you want to do element wise, you put a dot or yeah, a dot in front of the operator. So when you do a matrix wise, sometimes the operation won't work because of that dimension issues that are not compatible between the two matrices you're trying to multiply, for instance. Uh, and yeah, some functions are by default working column wise. So here we're not on the classic operators anymore. We're on the like predefined function of, of MATLAB. So for instance, the function max and min. Um, if you want to remember that it's it's kind of like fitting with what you anyway, I think would like to do spontaneously. I don't know. Like, um, you know, how if we go in the field or in the lab and we collect data, we tend to have uh, a row per individual and then a colon per variable. So for instance, uh, if I go in the field and I'm capturing bird and I'm measuring uh, their weight and the length of their wing, um, I will have all my bird IDs in the in the rows and then first colon will be the weight, second colon will be the wing length. And so if I want um, uh, the 
average weight that's going to be the average of the first column and if i want the average wing length that's the average of the second column so by default the function max and and means looks like that so you can try it for instance if i take uh again my uh matrix a um and i take max a then you see it looks at the maximum value for each column if I do the same thing, but with a transposed version of A, so the one with the apostrophe, then uh, same thing is looking by column. And same thing with the mean, ver mean function or the, uh, so mean minimum and the mean average uh, functions. So again, I invite you to always, when you use this kind of function in a script, um before running it on your huge data set maybe give it a, a test run on on a small matrix so you check it's actually doing what you think it's, it's doing the plot function is also working um column wise so uh yeah that's a bit weird but if you have a matrix like or matrix a again this one if you plot a so you can generate your first plot um you have if you write the function plot and then a uh it will appear in a in a pop-up window uh your plot and you can see here each line corresponds to uh a column so for instance the um yeah the yellow the blue line is the one that goes from one ten 100 you can see actually yeah, it's oops i moved uh you can see here it's at 100 uh this, the orange one is going from uh 220 200 and the yellow one is the 3 30 300 so that's following the the columns so that's just something to know you can close the window and your plot is gone Um, you can put two matrices together, so merge them um, or concatenate them with a concat the cat function for concatenating. Um, and the way to do it, so if you want to concatenate matrix matrices together, you need two matrices. And you also need to tell MATLAB on which dimension you want to put them together. So whether you want to put them on top of one another or side by side. So you yeah, remember I told you the first, when you use the size function, the first dimension is always the number of rows and the second, uh, sorry, the first uh, dimension showed is the number of rows and the second dimension is the number of columns. And so it's here, it's gonna be the same thing you're gonna use. If you want to put them, to concatenate your two matrices along a row, then you put as a first argument, one which is the dimension on which you want to do the concatenation and um if you want to do it on the other way around then you put your you put two at the argument uh for the dimension you're you're looking for so for instance uh which matrix do i have i have a and i have b so i can uh, put them at the top of one another, and I will have something like that. If I try the other way around, so side by side, it doesn't work because the uh, dimensions are not compatible. And again, the error message is pretty explicit. Uh, it's saying the dimension of the arrays being concatenated are not consistent. So you know that's an issue with that. Um, if I try again with uh so dimension two so i try to put them side by side this time i put a and i put the transpose version of b then it works because this time i they're compatible again everything good so far um there is a shortcut you can take uh if you don't want to use a cat uh 
function. I think the cat function is useful when you actually have things with really high dimension, then you just want to, you know, say, okay, you use a, I don't know, fourth dimension to, to put them side by side. Um, but otherwise, uh, you can also just use the basic notation we've seen before to put uh, elements side by side or on the top of one another in a, in a matrix. And so by that, I mean using the comma or the, or the semicolon um, characters. So for instance, if I want to have A at the top of B, I open a semi uh, square bracket to say I'm starting a new ma matrix. I put A, then I put a semicolon to say I'm moving to the next line, then I put B and I close my uh, matrix with uh, the uh, closing uh, square brackets. And I have the same thing where I have A at the top of B. If you want to put them side by side, that's the same thing, but with um, the comma. So I will use a, a transpose version of B so it works. And you have this. So that's. Uh, yeah, MATLAB is really straightforward the way you can write matrices. So that's very practical for that. Um, some examples of some things you can uh, do with matrices uh, with pre, uh, pre like available functions. Uh, for instance, there is a function find that will help you find all the non-zero elements uh, across a, a matrix. Uh, so for instance, if I have a vector, I would call this one C, uh, 0, 0, 1. That's my new vector. Uh, I type find C, and it's telling me that on the third position, there is a non-null element. If I add C equal 0, 1, 1, then it's telling me that on the third and on the second and third position, I have no new element. There is one thing uh, to pay attention with. It's, I think, not very intuitive, but you have to know it, it works that way. Because um, other other uh, other functions will work that way. If you actually have a matrix with uh, like a bigger matrix, not a not a vector. So for instance, here I define a new C, and I do zero zero zero, and then zero one zero. So if I print C, it looks something like that. And when I ask to find the non-null elements in C, so the way I think about it, and I think most of you might think about it, is that the non-null element is on the position, uh, so row two and uh, row two and uh, column two. So I would expect the answer to be two two, but actually uh, it's not the case. It's four. So it's actually counting the position. So it's putting a, an index on each one of your elements in your matrix, and it's counting at which position uh, your element is. Um, OK, so that's not very informative, because anywhere we count, that's going to be 4. But if I do, for instance, this one, Okay, here you see it's five. So it's because it's going through all the rows and then the columns. So as position one is a top left, two is a bottom left, three, four, and five. So yeah, that's something you have to keep in mind if you're using, um, if you're trying to call elements within a matrix or to find elements within the matrix, that's the way MATLAB will return the answer to you. So you have to be able to interpret it or to use it. Uh, again, I never remember which way it works. So when you start working with MATLAB, or if you switch from different programming environments, you can, I really encourage you, you check uh, before you run any big scripts, you just check on a, on a small matrix what it does and check what, that it does what you, you think it's doing. 
So yeah, if you want to try to remember it, it counts first down. So it goes through all the elements within a colon and then across. So it looks through the first colon and the second colon and so on. So we'll count one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So that was uh, matrix numbers, vectors, and so on. Uh, now there's another type of um, a variable that we might encounter and, and use, and that's strings, so character strings. So, you know, words or sentences. So for instance, if I uh, define a, a function, uh, a variable name, and I put my name in it, uh, you can see, you can actually already see in the workspace here that it's not treated like the other ones. Um, all the other elements were double. That's uh, the class that will correspond to the sublimatrices. And this one is car for a, a string of character. Um, yeah, you can print. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. So uh, handling uh, character, um, yeah, character strings will be useful for in several situations. So the first one is if you want MATLAB to print something. So for instance, if you are working on big data set and you want to say you want MATLAB to tell you, okay, I am done with running that function. For instance, you can actually tell MATLAB to once you're done running that function, you print that string of character saying, I'm done running that function. Or oh, that can also be useful when you're going to save um, a data. And you know, for instance, if you work with a CSV, so the uh, the comma delimited uh, format, or if you work with text, TXT, uh, you can, uh, for instance, uh, you know, separate the Different the different values in your table with either a tabulation or a comma, and that's um, you know something that is actually a character or a string of character. So it's useful to know how to uh, handle um, string of characters, and so uh, MATLAB to display um, character strings and potentially put them together. Use the function f print f. And so the way it works is uh, if you have just one variable, you can just you know put f print f and it will print it. Uh, here you can uh, see how it works when you want to put two 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 strings together. So for instance, here I put um, that percent s will call the string that is put as a second argument, and that you know what that backslash n is. I don't know if you've done a little bit of, if you use uh, any HTML or something like that. It's to say, go back to the, no, it's a, a line break. So go to the next line. So for instance, I use that here to get rid of the, of those symbols here. But anyway, that becomes useful when you have more than uh, one uh, variable, one string that you want to put in your, um, in your text. And so for instance, when I was saying, you know, if you want to print a CSV file, you can have the first value, uh, comma, second value, comma, third value, and so on. And so in that case, you will need to merge them in one string that then is then going to be saved. Uh, and so the way to do that is use the f print f function. So you can see here it works when you have uh, variables of different nature. So for instance, here I wanted to print the sentence, my name is with my name, and I have number of cats, that number of cats. And so my name, Amandine, is the variable my name, and that's a string. So I put the percent s sign. And my number of cats is a number that I defined before. And but this is a double, it's not a string, this is a double. So that's what I was showing you before uh, for MATLAB. Um, Actually, if I do that, I see like a vector or a number, um, the class will be the one. So you can check the class of any of your variables using the class function, as I just did here. 
So I did class A, that was a vector that returned double. If I do class name, that returned car because it's a, a string of character. That's what's written in your workspace that corresponds to the same thing. So we can try that thing I was saying. So for instance, uh, now I have my name. I have, I would put number cats. I don't have any cat. So if I want to print a sentence saying boss information, uh, I open the quotation mark to start my sentence. Then here I want to print my name. So it's going to be a predefined string. So that's person S. Then I keep on with my sentence. And here I want to print the number of cats I have. So that's a predefined double. So a number or a matrix or whatever. Uh, D. OK, and then I give the arguments that will feed into the, this person S and person D. So the person S, that's the variable name. And the person D, that's the variable number cats. And hopefully, I didn't make any typo. I didn't make any typo. So it works. If I do the same thing, so uh, yeah, that's see, that's a bit annoying when you don't put the the line break because it starts the common line will just start after the one. Um, so yeah, so the one thing I, I don't know if you notice that I do it's it works in most programming environments. If I use a up and down arrows on my keyboard, uh, I can call again whatever command line I wrote before. So here I want to run the same one I ran just before. So I use the up arrow and then the tab uh, key uh, to select it. And this time I will add the line break. So the backslash N and I have this nice sentence. Okay, so you can try uh, doing the same. Is there anything unclear? Are you all fine? Um, just something basic. What what does the S mean in front of the percent? The here on the yes. yeah yes. Uh, so that's um, so it's to tell MATLAB whether you're trying to print. Uh, so the variable you're trying to print it was my name. Uh, what is its type? And so for um, for a string, it was, it's person S. Then you can have different uh, types that you can use. So for instance, here I was using D for an uh, integer. Uh, that's actually for like double because integers are in the class double. But you can also change it depending on, for instance, the uh, format you want to give to your number. So that's something typically, unless you use it every day, uh, I never remember that kind of information. So you can just Google, uh, you know, print, different types of variable with MATLAB and that will give you that list of, of information or you can reopen the, the slides um, to, to check that. And so for instance, if I try to write the same sentence with uh, E instead of D, it changed the format of the number in front of the number of cats. Okay, got it, thank you. So yeah, it's to time and lab in which format you, you wanna you wanna print your whatever variable you're trying to print. Um, and yeah, two useful uh, characters. Um, the backslash N is to go to the next line and the backslash T is to uh, have a tab. Um, if you don't remember that kind of stuff, you can, uh, yeah, same like Google, um, how to how to put a tab in string MATLAB, and that will tell you that. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've worked before with uh, languages with which you need to declare your variable. That happens sometimes. That's not a bit the case with I think C plus plus and Java. Um, so for instance, before, you know, bef so far I've been like, yeah, E equal two and MATLAB knows that, okay. Uh, if I say A equal two and MATLAB knows that A is a, a double. So either a number of a, or a, a matrix, whatever you, you want to call that. Um, 
in some other environments, you actually need to say, okay, A is an integer, and then you can say A equals two. You don't need to do that with MATLAB because MATLAB will do it automatically. But uh, in some cases, you still need to know what is your variable because, uh, for instance, there are some operations that will only work on uh, string characters, character string, sorry, on uh, strings of characters, or some operation that will only work on matrices and so on. So if you need to check the class of your variable you're uh, handling, you use the class function as I was showing you. Or you can also directly look in the workspace because um, it's showing uh, here what they are. So when you have lots of variables, you might want to actually use the class function. If you have only a few, you can just check in the workspace. So there are a bunch of different uh, class. The only one we use together, I think, are um, so we've used double, that's, uh, yeah, all the numbers and matrices and so on will be double. We're going to see logicals later. Um, so that's when you have a logical test. So for instance, if you want to see if a value is bigger or equal to another, or uh, if a condition is true and so on. Uh, we've seen the car, and we're also going to see cell arrays, which are kind of looking like matrices, but a bit different. We'll see that later. Okay, any questions so far? Are you all good? I hope you are trying to run some stuff on your MATLAB and it works. Or if it doesn't work, you have error message that you can uh, easily interpret. Okay, so that was just the introduction. <laughs> and honestly, no one ever used the common window, I think, when we, we run algorithm. Um, most of the action is actually in the scripts. So we'll see what a script is. Um, so I was telling you before, uh, there are two places on your um, on, on the interface when you can write code. So the first one is a common window. That's what we've done so far. And the second one is the text editor or the, or the script. So if you, yeah, if I close it again, if you have something like that, uh, like I do have right now, if you go on the top left, you can have new script, or you can also, I think, go here on plus new and click on script, or you can do control N if you're on Windows. Um, new script, and here you have the text editor. So you can write uh, any command line. For instance, uh, if I type E equal to semicolon, uh, you know, that will happen here. If I type it in my script, uh, when I push enter, it's not executing. So that's very useful when you want to, for instance, have a code that has several lines uh, before it makes sense. So once I have uh, this one, so yeah, I have my very easy scripts. I can click on the run here. It actually need to be safe to be run, so I will ask you to, to name it. So I just keep the untitled for now, but you can give the name you want. And you can see here it, it run the untitled un, yeah, untitled for uh, file, which is the one I just created, and it returned whatever um, was supposed to be written. It's the exact equivalent of if I copied what I had written here and passed here, the same thing. On the other way to do it, you can select, and um, you might have to look if you're a Mac user. Uh, but and actually, I don't know. It works on if you have the web browser application. You you can tell me. But on the desktop version on Windows, on Windows, if I select the text in my script and I push F9, it also execute that. So it's very useful when you have yeah whatever you're doing that requires several lines to work. So for instance. We'll see when we work if statement, when we write if statement or for loops and stuff like that. That's stuff that by definition requires several, several lines. So it's uh, painful to write in the command window because a command window by default will execute every line one by one. Um, 
Yeah, so that's why it's useful to have scripts. It's also useful if you want to save whatever you, you're doing. You know, if you are um, using an algorithm, for instance, when you keep repeating the same operations, um, you know, instead of having to write them every time in your common window, you can have them in, in your script uh, window. That's also easier to save. Because um, before I was saying, uh, you can save your workspace with a save function, uh, but it's not saving the common window. Uh, and you might have an historic, but you know, as I showed before, when you use the top arrow, top down arrows, but that's you know not really easy to navigate. So uh, yeah, most of the time when we code, we actually code in the text editor, and then we execute whatever we want, either by selecting a few lines or running the uh, script. So um, yeah, so there are three other running code with uh, MATLAB. The first one is a common window, that's what we've seen. And the second one is scripts. Uh, the third one is within function. So function and scripts actually look very similar. We both uh, write them in the, in the text editor and we'll see more about function in the, in the coming days. So don't worry about, about it too much. Um, and as I was telling you at the, you know, if you, maybe a few hours before. Um, when you save your workspace, it's a dot .mat. And when you save a script, it's a dot .m. So it's also a MATLAB, a MATLAB specific format. Um, but yeah, dot .m is script, so you know, code that you've written. And uh, dot .mat is uh, the environment with all the variables you have in there. Um, okay, so I showed you if you want to create a new script, you can click on the new uh, script, or uh, you can also, I think I do it later, yeah. <laughs> if I want to create a, a new script without clicking, so again, that's, you know, a, a good habit to develop if you plan to, to use other environments where you don't have the nice interface. If you use the command edit and then you give the name uh, you want to give to the script. So for instance, here I was uh, using gene script, yeah, gene script. So that's the uh, name of the script I'm going to create. I type edit gene script, push enter. And it's telling me I don't know. Yeah, there is no such such thing as a gen gen script in that folder. So do you want to create it? You say yes, and tada, you have a script here. You can see it's also saved here. Now that it's created, for instance, uh, I type that. I save. Uh, I use Control S, or you can push that, click that button here. If I close it. And I ask the edit gen script again. It will reopen the script. Uh, now that it exists, it just reopens the script that existed. You have to be in the right uh, working directory. So that works because I'm in that folder. If, uh, if I were in a different folder, it wouldn't find it. It's, it's only looking within that, that folder. OK, so. Um, now, if I want to create a script, so for instance, I have uh, this one, I would uh, you know, save you watching me trying to type that without any typo. So I actually cheated and I already have it somewhere. So I'm changing my working directory um, secretly. So I'm not using that one anymore. I'm not using that one. Um, you do you, but I'm a bit like, I don't like having my common window busy either. So I actually, clear it pretty often. So you can um, right click on your command window and click clear command window and then it's, it's clean. So now I'm starting fresh. Uh, I changed my uh, working directory just by clicking, but I can check. So now I'm here. Uh, I want to open my gene script. Okay, so it's open here. And so that's, uh, that's the script uh, I wrote before. So you can try to wrote something equivalent. So it's very simple. Here I define three uh, 
variables that correspond to three numbers. Here, I do, I define a new variable, total genes, that will be equal to the sum of the three gene expression levels. So my three variables I defined before. Uh, I can also calculate the average. So here I, you know, I take the sum that I calculated before and I divide it by three, and then I display it. So I, I told you before, when I start working on different projects, I wouldn't call that a project, but for the purpose of this workshop, we will. Um, I like to start with uh, fresh environments because it helps me keeping track of what is being created and so on. So I'm gonna clear my environment right now. So I type clear and my workspace is now uh, empty. Okay, so if you want, you can write a simpler version of that where you just define, for instance, A, B, and C. So A equal one, B equal two, C equal three. And then you do total equal A plus B plus C. Uh, then you do average equal uh, total divided by three. And then this. Uh, you see here, I've put um, semicolon everywhere. So when I will run my script, it won't be a mess. Like it won't print everything. So there are different ways to run it. The easy click uh, and run thing is just, uh, I'm on the script, I click run here and it run it. So you can see the way it actually run it is it wrote gen, gen script. So if I actually do the same thing, that's gonna execute the script. So the two ways to run a script, first one is to click on run, Second one is to uh, type the name of your script. All right. You know it run, you, you have evidence it has run. Uh, you have two, two pieces of evidence. The first one is it, it displayed something and that's probably what you ask to be displayed. So the average level expression for the three genes or the AVG genes um, variable. And also you can see that even if they were not printed, and even if you never wrote it in your comment window, it actually defined the three variables, the gene expression one, two, three, and the total uh, gene, which is the sum that you define here. Okay, so what happened is everything that was in your script was executed, even if you didn't see it. Uh, and it's returned only the, the one thing you, you wanted, you asked it to return, which was uh, the average gene. If I run the same one, um, for instance, I if I remove the this gene, I don't, I can remove it that way, or I can also just comment it, and you see it won't be executed. So I did that. Um, if you if you run it, actually you're gonna save. So you you have to save before you run, or it's gonna do it automatically. You can see it still did it, but it didn't return anything because I didn't say to return anything. If I want to return the average number of genes, I can also remove the semicolon that was here and I run it again. And here you can see it returns it, but um, in the less compact version where, where it's also telling you the name of the variable. And actually you see here, uh, that's another MATLAB is taking you by the hand feature. <laughs> Um, suddenly my equal sign here is yellow. When I put my mouse on it, it's saying terminate statement with semicolon to suppress outputs. Because it's kind of, it's, it's a good practice to, in MATLAB to just put semicolon everywhere. So when you run things, it's clean. And the only things that are displayed are the things you want to be displayed. So for instance here, that one variable. Okay, is that clear for everyone? You see the benefits compared to just working in the average, uh, in the command window, sorry. Okay. So to execute a script, you can click on run. You see that in the command window that it was actually run. You can also always look at your workspace, your environment, to see that the variables that were supposed to be created have been created. 
Okay, now if I do a, a new uh, function, just to show you different examples. So I have it, I think in that one. Okay. Uh, again, I clear everything. So here I wrote a new script and this script is, um, Okay, if, if we were in person, I would, you know, ask someone in the room to explain what the script is doing, but I feel like on Zoom, it's, I don't want to put anyone in an awkward situation, so I just keep talking. But if someone wants to talk, you're, you're welcome to. Uh, but what this script is doing is, uh, first line is going to print the character, the, the character string hi. Um, then it's gonna uh, define A and define B and then display uh, A. So if I run that, it says hi, and then it's display A, which is four. Okay, moving on. So that's the same thing. You can see A and B are now in my command window. And you can see even if B never appeared anywhere on my, no, uh, sorry, A and B are in the workspace, even though B never appeared in the command window. Um, there is one thing that is very useful with MATLAB that I mentioned earlier on is the debugging uh, function. So uh, that's, if you if you have a function that, oh, the, the debugging feature, feature. If you have a, a script that for whatever reason is not executing whatever you, you want, you can um, use the debugging feature, which consists in, you click on whatever line, uh, for instance, I don't know if I think uh, there's a, something weird with that line, I can say, okay, run the whole script, but stop at line three, just by clicking here. And I have a red dot appearing and it's gonna run everything. So I'm gonna clear my environment. I run that. And you can see here, it didn't uh, define B because I asked it to stop before B. And yeah, you can, then you can click on the continue and it will continue the, the rest of the script. So if, she, is that if you're not sure whether there's an issue, you can go line by line like that and check where, where thing might, might go wrong. Uh, again, that's not the most complicated script, so it's not uh, too bad. Uh, you can see here I have a, I reuse my example I used before of my name and my number of cat. And here you can see a script that uh, will return to you the, so it will actually change the, that's a type of some of my functions. So here I define my name, I display my name, I define the number of cat I have, the variable my number of cats. And for instance, here that function, num to string, as the name is saying, it's gonna change the number of cat from a numeric to a string. And so that's gonna be defined in a new variable that I call car, uh, bar. so for instance, if I run that, okay, you can see now if I do class, my number of cats, that's gonna be a double. And if I do the same thing, but with um, the car, well, this time it's gonna be car even though um if i print it you know it's zero but this time you can see that correlation mark around it so anyway that's just an example of stuff you you can do in functions um yeah again you can run uh i'm sorry i'm talking fast because i'm still getting close to the end the um, yeah, if you want to check uh, the class of a, a variable I showed you, you can use a class function. There's another way to do it that is using the is whatever. So for instance, the is car will check whether your variable is a character. So if I do um, is car function 
on the my number of cats? Uh, the answer is no, because my number of cats is actually a double. If I do it on the cover, then the answer is yes. So when I said no, and uh, yes and no, actually what MATLAB register, and that's what I, I told you uh, before, we see another type of variable, which are logical. Um, it's actually a binary variable. It's either two or four, so yes or no, or zero or one. So if something is false or no, uh, it's going to return zero. So that was not a character. That was a double, so it's re it returns zero. And if it's true, it returns one. And that's going to be useful when we're going to see the, the if statement. So you can test different types. Uh, and you will have the same thing when you use relational operators. So for instance, greater or smaller than. So for instance, if I try one smaller than two, then the answer is yes. If I try one bigger than two, the answer is no. And same with equal. Uh, actually, okay, no, it didn't work. I think we have to put two equals. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, to check. So if I say one equal two, what MATLAB tries to do is to define two as a new value for one, but it's telling you, I don't want to do that. I can do it with a letter, but not a number. So if you actually want to compare the two numbers, it's you have to put equal equal. And then that returns. That is false. If I do a true statement, then it returns, right? Um, okay, and then, so we're going to see if statement. Uh, that's not something I want to rush in uh, whatever time I have left. So it's going to be better if we just see it tomorrow. So I'm going to skip for now. Um, okay, I missed there was a question in the chat an hour ago. Sorry about that. Uh, the videos are, the, so the workshop is uh, fully recorded. So um, Everything will be available at the end of each day. I'll put it on the on the drive, and um, I will uh, email you when it's the case. I actually need to check with Eloy because I think he's the one who has uh, the power to do that. But it, it should, be, yeah, you you will have access to it to the recording. Um, okay, is there any question so far? Okay, I take that as a no. So please, again, uh, if you can, if you haven't done it yet, please have, have MATLAB running on your computer because you know you're here to learn how to use MATLAB. I am not gonna check whether you are running stuff. Uh, that's you, you know I'm not gonna ask you to share your screen and show whatever you're running. Um, but you know I assume you are here because you're working with people who are using MATLAB. And if you just you know do the first step of having MATLAB running on your computer, that's you know like the biggest step in the first like in the right direction so please do it and if anything is wrong you can see with me um you know you'll get like this basic stuff that were just hard to google like how to open a new script and stuff like that like make sure that's something you can do and so then again the objective is to make you independent matlab users um yeah, and I email you uh, the scripts I've used today and so on. Everything will be on the, on the drive, but I email you. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me by email and I answer as best as I can. And otherwise, I guess I see you all tomorrow. And yeah, have a nice afternoon. See you tomorrow. I have uh, one quick question, more of a troubleshooting. I yeah. just happened to get myself in a little bit of a pickle here. Um, if you don't mind, I'll share my screen. Yeah, I think you should be able to do it. Yeah, OK. Uh, share. OK, so when I was, you were pointing out um, how to indicate you know, potential troublesome lines. Yeah. Which I was doing, but then I don't know how I was able to put this in, but I don't know what this is and how to move it. Yeah, I think it's uh, saying that you see on the on the top uh, band, you have continue instead of run. If you go on the right, like top right, if you move up a little bit more. 
uh, yeah, and then right, <laughs> you know where the run button was. Now it's uh, continue just below, just below your mouse. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, here. Okay. So yeah, it's telling you that if you click Got on it. continue, it's gonna start from here. Because you stopped just Got before. Continue. And so now now you've run everything. So the continue is back to run or run section. To okay. what it was before okay, you used you. the debugging stuff. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. No worries. Okay, see you tomorrow. Bye. All right, bye-bye.